Hello my friends, welcome again to my video channel. Today we will continue our work and the next board is on the extenders. It's a passband tuning and reference board. And while we are waiting for the uh, cap or very cap diodes for the repair of the VCO, we can focus on the next topic. We have seen that the passband tuning is not working properly and also the switching with the mode switch between USB, LSB and so on didn't work as it should. There was no difference between USB and LSB, also the passband tuning didn't operate correctly. We were always in the LSB position, so uh, we have a problem, as I think, in the passband tuning board. Let's have a look into the schematic. The passband tuning is made with this oscillator. It's a crystal oscillator controlled by this cap diode or very cap I always say cap diodes sorry um, MV209 it's the same which we had a problem in the VCO maybe it makes also trouble here here's analog switch we'll come to this topic later and this oscillator it has in the range of uh, 13 megahertz is used two times it is fed one time to the so this mixer and generates the BF uh, sorry the second LO frequency this mixed up to frequency 53 and higher megahertz and the second time it is used this chain this is an oscillator also and generates a bfo output with 5 megahertz so when we vary this frequency here we have no change in the audio pitch but the filter is shifted we know this principle from other receivers of those days that this oscillator only affects the position of the filter related to the bfo but not the BFO frequency itself, the BFO is uh, is constant because when we change here the BFO frequency in this chain, we also change in this chain here the second LO and both frequencies drift in the same direction, so the difference is constant. Now let's have a thorough look at this schematic here. This I see is a 4016, it's a quad analog switch. We have here the input, the voltages from the pots on the power supply board, the blue pots. And they set the uh, voltage for USB, LSB, CW and so on. And depending upon the mode, whether we have receive or we have transmit or we have uh, AM, <coughs> this is 10 volt AM transmit here, then the USB is also used for Transmit in AM. AM is made by generating the USB signal plus the reinsertion of the carrier behind the SSB filter. These voltages are controlled or switched by the mode switch. We can see it here. And this input from the uh, passband tuning control. The mode switch you can imagine is here on the, on the right side. Here we have the power supply with the voltages USB, LSB, CW, RTTY. They go to the uh, mode switch and come back. And depending upon the position, for example, of the passband tuning switch, whether it's on or off, this wiper goes to the uh, CL, I think it's control line or so for receive. Then we have the passband tuning and the passband tuning switch is off. Then we use the same as for the transmit position. So no difference between receive and transmit. And this is all made in the uh, mode switch and of course using the 10 volt transmit and 10 volt receive for switching. So the first check would be check the operation of this IC. By the way, pin 14 is plus 10 volt and 7 is ground. It's not shown in the schematic, but it's a standard application. The IC is on the or, or the complete board is on the extender. And this is the quad uh, analog switch, crystal, it's a coil. So we will first check this operation, input and output voltages of this circuit. And then we can see whether we are on the right, on the right track or have to rethink about it. We will measure the voltages in the U1001. First, of course, the 14 volt and the ground, but I think this is okay. The output is pin 3 and 2 there in parallel with pin 9 I will measure at pin 3 and then the input of the passband tuning pot I switch to passband tuning on 
it's on the front panel so we have an input voltage here and this should be the same as pin 3 it should switch through without nearly without any losses in case of receive 10 volt receive this switches on so pin 4 and pin 3 and pin 2 should have the same voltage we can see it here this is pin 1 2 and 3 is connected and pin 4 is the input from the pot and I will switch it on now volt and the input is also 5 volt up to now it works when I go to USB 4 volt in output 4 volt input so in the moment it is okay we have to wait a little bit I'm waiting now for approximately 15 minutes and nothing happened. I'm here in the correct sideband setting, upper sideband, lower sideband, no reception. When I increase the frequency, then we are on the lower sideband and upper sideband doesn't receive. When we switch off passband tuning, lower sideband receives. When I go to the upper sideband position, it works. What's going on? Okay, I took out the board. Maybe it wasn't seated also properly, not properly, but I'm not sure uh, because I had a feeling it was okay. And uh, the contacts here look good. I will first do a in the upper side position, upper side bend position where we had the problem. I will try with some temperature shocks, some heat and some cold. And now the cold. This oscillator, crystal the coil. It's rather icy, rather cold. Okay. was a little bit too much cold. <laughs> we have another effect. No, it's okay again. Upper side bend. I got tune up. Lower side bend. Pass band tuning. Upper side bend. Lower side bend. It works again. I think it was a little bit too hefty. And now we have water in it. The humidity now generates condensed water. Well, or was it a question of heat? I will fetch my heat gun. The heat gun is set to 200 Celsius and I will dry it out. The board is in place again. I will solder the pins 
but there was obviously no problem as I've seen. Also the distance holder, here's a red distance holder to prevent that the board comes too close to the shielding is in place so we have no problem with the distance from the uh, component wiring to the uh, chassis. When I checked it I've seen here we have one problem with this board. There is no distance holder, maybe it is lost and the distance here is very very close. I have to add some it. It's the uh, so-called up converter board. I will add here a distance holder, maybe it is lost or so. It's always uh, necessary to have a look at, at these red distance holders that they are all in place to protect that the board comes too close to the uh, chassis to the shielding. Okay, but now it works. I don't know what I have to do. I will check also the pins from the lower side, from the main board. I will uh, flip up the whole chassis and look whether these pins are soldered properly on the main board, but I'm sure because when I when I move it around nothing happens. Maybe it was not seated properly, but uh, when I took it out I didn't have the feeling that there was something wrong. But okay, it means nothing. Well, that's it for the moment. I, I hate this situation because maybe there is a problem uh, and I sent the transceiver back to the owner and uh, one week later I get an email where he states that something is wrong again. Difficult, difficult. But uh, I will uh, check it uh, in the next hours because we have to do some other work here. And um, maybe when there is a fault it will occur again. But for the moment I will stop examining this and I think it is cleared. And we can continue now. Before I start with the auxiliary 7 board and the modules, I do a long term, long time test. The output of the receiver is connected to the scope. You can see it here, where we have the signal tuned to the calibrator and set to 21 MHz in the band where we had the VCO problem. I check it. Up to now, I have not the new uh, work cap in the place, only the old one, the provisional solution. And uh, with the passband tuning, I set it to USB. And you see when I detune it, the signal disappears. <coughs> but I cannot look always at the scope. So I connected my signal tracer. You see here, this is a tone. But I go to the test position. A little bit too. Okay. When the signal is strong enough, the uh, signal is not in the speaker. And when the signal drops, for example, I, I simulate it with the passband shift, then I get an alarm. That's a nice feature of this uh, signal tracer. There's a one kilohertz generator inside. And when the signal drops below a certain level showed on the meter, then there's a trigger in it. And the uh, one kilohertz test position generates a tone. That's a nice feature. Not necessary for me to look always onto the uh, screen of the scope. And now let's start with the auxiliary 7 board. The auxiliary 7 board is programmed with diode modules. These are the original diode modules from uh, Drake, <coughs> or better said from Texas Instruments as I see. There are diodes in it in a configuration like this. And uh, depending upon the band which we want to code, we need diodes in this configuration. Pin 1 is a plus 5 volt. And there are always diodes everywhere. And diodes which are not needed have to be cut off. That's the description here in the in the manual of the AUX7. Auxiliary 7. C means to be cut. Or inverse information. Where is a space where it is not cut, there is a diode. So the three bands for the VLF reception or medium wave reception and long wave. Uh, we have here diodes and I have seen that two modules are already installed. By the way, this is module or place one, two, three. This, sorry, one is here. One is here on this side and this is seven, eight. 
and the the last one for one to one point five megahertz is not fair. We can uh, compare it with the uh, cut pins, for example, this module, which is for the range dot five to one. It has diode. Diode number three is cut. We can see here. Four, we have a diode, and the next diode is pin number nine. There is a diode. Ten is not existing. Diode number ten is always a uh, uh, diode or the pin for the TX enable. It has to be there when we want to transmit on this band. And pin uh, twelve is also present. That's uh, number twelve. Sorry, this here number twelve. And this is uh, for the band set of the front, so that the correct band setting is given. This also is important for the setting of the VCO, not only for the band setting. Well, I will do the missing one module for the range 1 to 1.5 MHz. According to this, I need uh, one, two, three diodes. And then I will uh, generate the diodes for 10, 18 and 24.5 MHz for the WARC bands which the TR7 has not. When we use these modules and also use a diode for TX enable like this one and this and this for the bands then it is not necessary to cut the trace on the bottom side of the uh, transceiver to interrupt the unlock line of the PLL output. It's not a good idea to unlock the PLL line or to, to, to cut it and to interrupt this uh, line because the uh, transceiver always is in danger not to lock precisely as we have seen on the frequency and then we would have a transmission out of the band or over the, all, over <laughs> the whole band. Not good. So this modification which is sometimes made in a TR7 to have a full transmission on all bands is not good. So this transceiver will have only transmission in the amateur radio bands, including the new bands, but not on others. And if it is still needed to have another band, then we can use another module here, according to this list. And to uh, generate a new one, we have it for 10 megahertz, 18 megahertz, and 24 megahertz, where we, we need the diodes. For 10 megahertz, we need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is same as here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 diodes. I will install them on, on these uh, sockets, the diodes. And these sockets fit very uh, nice into these sockets here. There are special uh, holders available on the market, but they are a little bit too high, a little bit too spacey. Not good because we do not have such much space when we insert this plug vertically. There's not so much space in the TR7 in this direction. So let's start with the first module. Here we have the first module in place. This is a common pin for plus 5 volt. 1, 2, 3, this is pin 4. This is pin 9 and this is pin 12. Three times cathodes, common anode. And this is a range between 1 and 1.5 megahertz. So we're in position 8, so we have in position 6 the range from 0 to 0 0.5. This is a range from 0 0.5 to 1, and this is a range from 1 to 1.5 MHz. And now we will install the other ones. All modules are in. That's for 10 MHz. Program 1, 18 MHz. This is this. This is this. This is this, and this is for 24.5 MHz, this. The next two are free, nothing. And then we have the three modules for the VLF frequencies, 0 to 500 kHz, 500 kHz to 1 MHz, and 1 MHz to 1.5 MHz. Well, now we can uh, put it into the TR7 and do a thorough check. And here we have the AUX7 in place. By the way, these trimmers, the trim caps, are for the use of uh, crystals. There are sockets. We could also use a uh, crystal in each setting of the auxiliary switch on the front panel to have programmed 
uh, channels for uh, for any purpose but this makes no sense nowadays we have a, a v, uh, digital frequency indication and a pto so we can go to any frequency and the crystal here is beyond any uh, sense it, it would replace the pto one by one but again it is not needed just for fun well let's do first check we have the calibrator in for program number one it's 10 megahertz we have set band indication as long as we do not set it to the range 10 to 15 megahertz and set band is off if this is 10 megahertz reception or 10.025 next band is 18 megahertz we again have a set band indication because we need to go to 15 to 21 megahertz to this range when you go too far also set band this set band always controls that the setting of the band that means the setting of the high and low pass filter corresponds to the setting of the frequency and then we go to 24.5 megahertz this is a range from 22 to 30 megahertz again we have reception okay let's go four and five there's nothing six seven eight is the lowest frequency range so we have got we have to go down to 1.5 megahertz which is only uh, it's absolutely not necessary to go to this band but the program is that the set band is quiet <laughs> it's dark when we are in this range 1.5 to 2 megahertz but both uh, high and low pass filters are not active because we have to connect to the um, very low frequency antenna input this is a separate input behind the high pass where we have no uh, pre-selection that's a, a problem that's 0 to 500 kilohertz 500 kilohertz to 1 megahertz and 1 to 1.5 megahertz all are programmed for this band it's important to have the right vco therefore it's necessary to, to, to go into the right setting of the band because this band setting also switches the vco low and vco high here we have the vco low okay that's the first test we have no frequency indication at the moment but we can check it with the dr7 in place but before <coughs> i can install the dr7 uh, i need to um, modify the vco with the <coughs> correct very cup diode that the uh, diode i have ordered but it's still not not arrived today so i will stop it for now a short check of the tx enable the transmit function the pa brick is not energized there is no uh, power supply connected to the 13.8 volt input of the pa only the transceiver is supplied with 13 volt for rx and tx not the pa so it's by the way i've set the power to zero we are on the 20 meter band and maybe you hear it When I go to the first band, 10 megahertz, when I go to the wrong setting of the band and we have set band, nothing happens. When I go to the right band setting, set band disappears. Go to next uh, band, 18 megahertz, nothing happens. When I go to the right one, When I go to the next one, which is also wrong, nothing happens, but it's right for 24.5 megahertz. When I'm here on the wrong setting, also doesn't work. <coughs> Let's go to the AM bands. Transmit does not work. Transmit does not work. Transmit does not work because the diode for TX enable is not connected in these three settings. Okay, obviously the diode matrix is okay. And very important, the cut here is resolded again. This is a TX enable. <coughs> this signal is only active for the so-called old amateur radio bands plus now for the three new WARC bands which we have programmed on the AUX7 board as we have seen all other bands are not permitted to, to, uh, to transmit it's uh, 
not possible. So uh, if you would want to have a transmission on the other band, it would be necessary to program a, a new module for the AUX7 board with TX enabled with a diode to pin 10. So this would also be uh, good for transmission. The VCO board is in place now again. The cap diode is swapped by a new, new old one. It works. Before I install the shield and the DR7, I make a short test of this uh, range of the VCO, whether any uh, new alignment is required. I, I checked the uh, alignment when the VCO board was out, but now I have the shielding installed, uh, soldered on again, and it is in place. I measured the output frequency of the oscillator. This is the connection where the uh, DR7, the counter, is connected. So we can measure the first LO or the VCO frequency, which is 48.05 above the reception. One test is to select the 14 MHz band according to the uh, manual and then to go to the fixed receive. There is no crystal installed, no fixed crystal. So the uh, we can hear it. it, it runs up, unlocked, and it should go up to a frequency of um, 17 megahertz. We at 48.05, and we can expect six, 65 megahertz, and we have 65 megahertz, so that's okay. This band needs no alignment, and when we go to 28, the frequency should be. Um, 32 megahertz and when we add the 48.05 the frequency should be in the range of 80 megahertz it has 82 megahertz that's also okay so this uh, setting of the VCOs is okay and we can can go back to to normal receive the other frequencies are obviously 28 megahertz the PTO is set to zero so when we have 28.5 plus 48.05, we have 76.55, that's okay, and the other bands are also okay. Also the auxiliary programs are checked all. So we, we can do it later with the DR7 in place. I will install now the DR7. I don't see any other necessities for aligning the VCO board again. So that the DR7 can be installed now. The DR7 is in place. The transceiver now is working. I will do some final tests. The <whistles> transmitter also works. <whistles> we have full output. The A ALC has to be set. It is not limited. The output is unlimited by ALC. The setting is not correct. We can check also the auxiliary band this is 10 megahertz band and in 10 megahertz we also can transmit the 18 megahertz band we can also transmit but this is 24.5 we can also transmit and here we have the three bands for very low frequency this is a range from 0 to 500. We can set the frequency theoretically down to 0, but the reception is not possible because there are coupling capacitors in. I don't know the uh, exact minimum operating frequency, or the lowest operating frequency. The bandpass filters, high and low pass filters, are not active in this setting. The VLF input is um, it's a separate input on the rear side and it is bypassing the high and low pass filters. The only uh, frequency selection is the input of the first mixer, which is a 30 MHz low pass. That's not the best solution for these frequencies, but okay, if the owner wants to operate to listen on these frequencies, he needs a separate uh, pre-selection. Here we have the range from 500 to 1 MHz and this is 1 MHz to 1.5 MHz but only reception. When we have here the, the calibrator, 1050, 25, 1 megahertz. Well, that's it. Again, 
I have to do some alignments. Setting the blue pots have to be set for the for the uh, frequency settings of the BFO. The pitch is a little bit different between USB and LSB, but bus band tuning is okay. This has also to be aligned for the zero setting and so on and so on. I don't show it in detail in the last video sequence of the last TR7 I've made. You can see a, a complete full alignment procedure. I don't repeat it here, makes no sense. So I do a, a only a long time test, long term, long time test with it to see how stable it is now. Now we are at the end of this project. As I told you, I will do some final works on it. Again, not necessary to show it. And a long time test, many, many hours of operation. I do it with an automatic sequence. Receiving and keying and receiving and keying to check also the transmit path, not on the receive path and see what happens. The reason is in the last uh, TR7 project, there was a problem. I've sent the uh, transceiver back to the owner and after mm -hmm. I think two weeks there came a, an email in. Holy smoke came out of the transceiver. Uh, that's what I love. Hi, I don't want to uh, have happened this a second time here with this transceiver. So I will uh, do it uh, more thoroughly, more long time test over the weekend to see what happens. The other transceiver is uh, on the way back to me. I will check it what happened. Maybe it will, will be another video about the TR7. I'm not sure what happened. If it's an interesting fault, I will show it. If not, it's only a, a bad capacitor. Okay, not necessary to show it. Well, that's it with this project. After some tests, I will send it back to the owner. Stay healthy, stay tuned and see you on this channel.